your own. Okay, the Lord spoke to me last night again about this. This was about inner city violence and how we handle uh, inner city violence, in, in particularly with uh, the blacks. Um, you know, now before I talk about this, I want you to understand something about the blacks, um, the American blacks, of which I am a part of, by the way. I have ancestors in this country who were slaves. So in that fashion, I can relate to them. I can't relate to them in saying that I have lived uh, with them in the inner city. Uh, I did live for a while in Cincinnati, and I, ha I, I saw firsthand how they um, lived in the projects. I lived in the projects with them. Okay, so I I can speak from that point of view. And then there, there's a lot of things here that I can speak from, which is why the Lord spoke to me about it. But how the how America is dealing with the blacks, justifying Here's some listings cause and justifying what I was distracted for a moment justifying what is going on in the hearts and the minds of the people uh, <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> my honey just has to tell me something you know what that's kind of that's kind of part of my sermon because you know America and is feeling this and give me that give me that I did. I put it up right. Yeah. See, America's feeling that they just have to say something. And the blacks are feeling that they just have to say something. And and they're both right. And they're both right. But how we do that can make all the difference in the world. And and the reason I'm saying that is, is this. American blacks are not... African Americans. Now, some of you I know you choose to call yourself African Americans. I am not an African American. I was born in the United States of America. Whether my skin is black or whether my skin is white doesn't matter. I'm an American. I'm an American citizen. I've been here all my life since the day that I was born. I was born in the hills of Virginia. And that is my heritage. I am not an African American. And I've, I know a lot of other blacks that say the same thing. And I want to tell you something about our blacks, okay? Myself included. There is no other blacks on any continent in the world like our blacks. I say our blacks because they are a part of us. They are a part of who we are. They are as much American as anybody walking on the face of this planet. They are a part of our culture. They go back 200 years. They have earned their place in our society. Are you listening to me, America? They have earned their place. They come in as illegal immigrants. Well, under the law at that time, they were not illegal, but <clears throat> they didn't come in under their own free will, is what I'm saying. So in that fashion, they were illegal. But they earned their place. They worked hard. A lot of those slaves, they worked their way to freedom. Man, that's something to be respected because that was not an easy thing to do. The blacks have earned their place in American society. Now, although a lot of them still are holding grudges, they still are, they still are trying to make America pay for 
what happened to them 200 years ago. Um, that America doesn't exist anymore. That America doesn't exist. What happened to that America? A Republican named Abraham Lincoln signed a bill into law that was called, <clears throat> which is still on the books today, that is called the Emancipation Proclamation, setting all men free and equal. And at that time, at that time, the blacks had earned their place in our society, taking a long time for that to sink in. That's like 1850 or something. And now, 150 years later, it's still sinking in. It's still sinking in. Okay, but now this is the point of view that I want to go at that today, okay? We as Americans, not just Americans, we as the Preachers, teachers, prophets, evangelists, um, apostles, the, the teachers of the gospel need to start pointing that out. Uh, we're so failing. You know what? The black preachers gather up the black people. The white people gather up the white people. The Spanish, gather up the Spanish. It, by the way, the Spanish have earned a, their place in our society. The Spanish have earned their place in our society. So have the Jews. So have the um, uh, uh, the Irish and and the Germans. The, the, the immigrants, have, they have all earned their place in our society. But there's one coming in who is trying to destroy our society. Now that is not earning their place. And when I say earn their place, I'm not talking about rioting until they respect you. I'm not talking about blowing up buildings and burning down houses and shooting people, the, the BLM, cop killers of America. I'm not talking about, that's not earning a place in our society. That's destroying our society. It's different. When you fight violence with violence, you only get violence back. You remember Dr. Martin Luther King? I love that thing that he said. He says the rising tides of the of revenge, are, and I'm saying this wrong, but this is what he was saying. The rising, the ever rising tides of revenge are constantly. You, this was the thing. It's washing back our revenge upon. I'll try to get that statement. I've got it in my Bible there somewhere. Let me see if I've got it here. I might have, I might have put it away, but uh, I usually keep a copy of that in my Bible. The ever-rising tides of revenge. Yeah, I'm kind of ashamed that I don't have it memorized. Okay, me being somebody that who should memorize things like that. Let me bring that up real quick and read it to you, okay? Because <clears throat> that is one of my favorite uh, speeches that he gave. And it should pop something up here really quick. <clears throat> and it's got a statement here by somebody that said Martin Luther King would say to uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, see, that kind of thing just destroys America. Um, okay, working, working, working. Here's a part of that speech. It says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. 
Only love can do that, Dr. Martin Luther King. And that also is a paraphrase of what he said there. That's not exactly the way his speech went. The ever-rising tides of revenge. Maybe I should put speech in there. And it's got a bunch of pictures here of Martin Luther King Jr. I, you know what? I think I will put this on the front page of my... Um, I'm not going to put that on the front page of anything. My computer locked up again. They must have a bug. Liberals must have a bug uh, fixed to this. So when you try to share it, it locks up your computer. They don't want, you know what, they don't, they don't want this kind of stuff backed by this kind of men getting out because they know that if they do, it will be an end of their agenda. Okay, let's see if I can get it here now. Okay, just bear with me. I know, but let me tell you something. This stuff is, is very, very important. And they're calling uh, Martin Luther King uh, an African American here. And, uh, Martin, you know what? These people were full-blooded Americans. They, they, uh, I can't get it to go. Anyways, um, back over here to the book of Psalms. Okay. Now listen to this. Psalm 7. Psalm 7, 7. Show shall the congregation of the people can pass thee about for their sakes. Therefore return thou. My computer going nuts today. Uh, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity that is mine. The integrity that is mine. It doesn't matter what your background, culture, where you came from, what your, the people you're related to, doesn't really matter. But what matters is um, where you're going in life. You can... People can choose the job. In certain situations, people can choose job. People can choose what section they want to put you in in their minds. But you, you're the only guy that can choose the attitude. And your attitude will make the difference between what you have and what will have you. I want to say that again. Your attitude will make the difference in between what you will have and what will have you. You know what, about 25% of the blacks in this country have a really good attitude. And a lot of the other blacks in this country has a terrible attitude. And I am guess from what I know about how many people voted according to what is this thing that I'm guessing about, okay? So this is a guesstimation. I'm, I'm guessing also that it's really close. And that's what makes the difference. And that's what God was pointing out in this dream. In this dream, I had a scepter. And I was being a attacked by uh, a, a black guy who wanted to rob me. He saw the scepter that I had, this power. And jewels. Oh, man, this thing was beautiful. I had jewels all up and down this thing. And... and uh, we were in a battle and I won the battle and all of a sudden I was happy to answer for the battle that I had righteously defended myself in. Okay? And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to correct this problem and and this problem is going to have to be um, answered for in this new administration. We're going to get anywhere. We're going to get anywhere until we deal with the blacks. The, the media focuses on the blacks. It's going to be a big issue for them. And, and because according to the media, the, the blacks are still the trodden down of America. Listen, as long as the, you let the media treat you like the trodden down, you're going to be the trodden down. 
when the Bible says God judged the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day God is angry with the wicked every day that is uh, Psalm 7 11 he judged the righteous and he's angry with the wicked every day if he turn not he will wet his sword he has bent his bow he made it ready he has also prepared for him the instruments of death he ordained his arrow against the persecutor the persecutors behold he travaileth with iniquity he hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood you know what these are these are kind of things that dr martin luther king had deep within his heart had deep within his heart let's see if we can go back there and get a little bit of that what he was saying okay No, I was hoping I could get his speech, and it's just not here. All they got is a long, drawn-out. Um, but I'll try to have some of that on my uh, description already for you, so you can read that. It's a really good speech. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time. Another great message across the middle ministry.